Al Shalamti. Gentlemen, precious ladies and learning students, Tenastali, Hotep, greetings. Yours truly, Dr. Yates, the inventor of grass matics, is saying, Welcome to another episode of grass matics. Today, we're going to be addressing trigonometry. The question is, what is the meaning of the word trigonometry? That's what we should be asking. What is the meaning of the word trigonometry? Well, trigonometry, according to the Greeks, is a Greek word, and it means the measurement of angles. Trigonometry is being defined according to the Greek word, a Greek definition, the measurement of angles. What is the meaning of the word geography? Geography means a photographic explanation of measurement of the earth. The word geo means earth, right? And geography is a photogenic explanation of the measurement and length of the planet earth, right? Now, geometry would be the measurement, okay, of angles and also of shapes on the planet Earth. Geometry. You got geography and you have geometry. Geography is talking about a photogenic, right? And the measurement of things upon the Earth or an image, which is photo, you got the word photo, right? From the word geography, right? But geometry is the measurement of things based on shapes and sizes upon the earth. Now trigonometry, of course, means the measurement of the angles. Here on the board we have, there are certain terminology. Remember Dr. Yates says that math should be taught as a perceptional quanqua? Well, in this particular quanqua, there are certain words that is being used and you must associate yourself with those words. Those words go with the teaching of that topic. They're wrongfully called subject. Now, the word sign, they spell it S-I-N-E, sign, and uh, I think that's fine because F-I-N-E is fine, so S-I-N-E is sign, okay? So they say sign, note the word sign, cosine, tangent ratio. These are the terminology we use in trigonometry. Now S-I-N is short for sign, so you see I write it S-I-N, I'm referring to sign. Uh, don't get caught up in the biblical term of sin. Right? That's how they spell sin also in the Bible. But this means sine. Okay? A sine angle would be opposite above hypotenuse. The hypotenuse. We learn about what is opposite and what is hypotenuse. All right? Now here is an, an illustration here of an angle, a triangle three sides, and we have to identify what is the hypotenuse and what is the opposite side. Well, we have a A, C, B, and in between the X, the Y, and the Z, identifying the lines. Here, when you're finding the equation for the sine angle, it would be the opposite, which is the Y, is opposite to this, right? Because this is a hypotenuse, this angle is called a hypotenuse, right? So it would be this above that. Y above Z. Z is the hypotenuse, and Y is the opposite to the hypotenuse, right? So that would be the formula to find out. What are you doing when you're trying to find out the sine angle? Here you have cosine angle. Cosine would be considered, and not considered, adjacent above the hypotenuse. Adjacent. This is adjacent. Here's a hypotenuse, and this angle, this line here, is known to be adjacent to it. That's why we title this X, so you can see the difference here. So adjacent would be above the hypotenuse, and that would be X over Z. Now we have tangent angle ratio. Okay, the tangent angle would be opposite above adjacent, okay? We already learned that this is the adjacent, right? And this is the opposite, right? So this will be above that when you're trying to find the tangent angle. 
This is the formula, all right? To finding when you want to ask you for the sine angle, just remember this is the formula. Just look for what is considered a hypotenuse, right? Whatever number the hypotenuse is, you put that number there, and you realize that the opposite side of the number it is, you put it above, and you do the equation. Same thing with the cosine angle. If they ask you for, if the question is based on the cosine angle, just remember this is the formula, right? It would be, of course, the tangent, right? Which is the x, okay? Actually, I'm sorry, the adjacent, which is the x, and that would be above the hypotenuse, which is this right here, okay? All right. So, the adjacent, right? Above the hypotenuse. But the tangent is the opposite. We know this is the opposite, right? And of course, you're going to be working with the opposite above the adjacent. The base right here is known to be the adjacent. So, this is the formula when, we use, when you can use in trigonometry. That is going to get into more of trigonometry. But for now, you're going to be learning the basics, which is arithmetic. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, including timetables. You're going to be learning also fractions, decimal, percentage. Right. Percentage is very important. And ratio. You'll be learning that along with algebra, geometry, and then we go also go into calculus. Those are the basic things you'll be getting here in Grassmatics. Remember now, Grassmatics is nine series. Part one, two, and three. Then you have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine is the highest number there is, all right? So the nine series. And all you can do is write it out, yes, and request. I recommend, first of all, that you get part one, two, and three first. So you can propel you to four, five, and six, and that will propel you into seven, eight, and nine. If you get seven and nine, you'll be so lost because you're missing out on the basics. Get the whole nine series, all right? This is your friend, Dr. Yates, saying thank you very much for watching Grass. Maddox on this televised network or on YouTube, most of all, for those who got in the Grass Maddox DVD. Dr. Yates is saying, Betam Amise Ganando. Toda Rabba. Thank you very much. Shukran. Thank you. So, coming up, much more on Grass Maddox. Dr. Yates is saying, Shalam Tiyal.